Hello, my name is Reginald and I would like to introduce you to the new features of Squish 4.2. For those who don't know us yet, we are Froglogic, we are headquartered in Hamburg, Germany and we are a vendor of the cross-platform, cross-technology GUI testing tool Squish. By today, more than 1,500 companies all over the world are using Squish to automate uh, all aspects of their GUI testing. We support a wide range of technologies including Qt, Java, web applications, native Windows applications, native Mac applications, mobile applications such as on iOS devices, on a wide range of platforms which includes Windows, Linux, Unix, Mac OS X as well as several embedded and mobile platforms. But now let's focus on what's new in the version 4.2 of Squish. One area we greatly improved is verification points. Up to 4.1 it was possible to insert property verifications which allowed you to automatically verify certain property values against expected values and it was also possible to insert so-called screenshot verifications. Now we added a third kind of verification point type uh, for complex data controls such as tables. So it is now possible to uh, insert a verifica verification point for a whole table object in any GUI technology and configure um, uh, what it shall be compared against. When a test is ran and a verif such a verification fails, you will then get a nicely visual view of the differences which uh, make it, uh, makes it easy to spot where the verification failed. Another improvement has been to add Ruby as another language choice for the test script language. It always is possible to choose between uh, several different script languages for the test scripts in Squish. Up to version 4.1 we gave the choices of JavaScript, Python, Perl and TCL. But lately we got a lot of requests for Ruby scripting, so with 4.2 we added the possibility to also implement your automated tests using the Ruby scripting language. Finally, we also simplified the setup for launcher applications. That's necessary when you're testing, for example, iOS applications or Java Web Start applications or applications written using the Qt-based QML or Quick Framework. Um, so far, it was a bit tedious to set up the testing for those kind of applications and that has been greatly simplified now. And along those lines goes the next point, uh, uh, which reads usability improvements in the Squish IDE. There we uh, listened a lot to our users uh, to improve uh, s uh, several aspects of the user interface of our test development environment, the Squish IDE. So those were all improvements which apply for all different editions of Squish, but we also have uh, improvements which are specific to uh, uh, editions of Squish, such as Squish for Windows. So for Squish for Windows, we added uh, support for the WPF GUI toolkit. Um, so now it is possible to automate tests which are written using .NET WPF, which means we detect all the different um, control types of WPF applications up to complex controls such as the data grid. And we of course expose the whole um, object hierarchy and uh, properties of the WPF um, uh, object model to our testers. And for Squish for Web, we added support for the Smart GWT Web Toolkit. Um, that's a very sophisticated toolkit to create um, uh, web applications which uh, uh, give you the look and feel and behavior of desktop applications actually. So this is a toolkit which really allows you to create complex applications with all kinds of complex GUI controls. And we added a specific plugin for this technology. So when you automate an application based on Smart GWT, you get a, a, a great object recognition uh, which goes far beyond of standard web uh, uh, support. Now, um, we also did a lot on the integration sides of Squish. So, of course, uh, besides just automating your GUI tests, it's very important to integrate the test execution into your test management or continuous integration servers. Um, for that purpose, we are offering a wide range of integration plugins for all kind of frameworks um, uh, for a long time already. Um, with Squish 4.2, we um, specifically improved our plugin for the HP Quality Center or 
HP ALM as it is called today. So most importantly, we added support for HP ALM 11. So far, we only supported everything up to HP Call Center 10. So, but, so now we also support ALM 11 and we also improved the functionality of this plugin uh, quite a bit. Then we also imp implemented a new plugin uh, which allows to integrate squish tests and squish test executions into the ra Rational Quality Manager test management system or in short RQM. So this plugin is completely new um, and is now available as of Squish 4.2 as well. And finally, we improved our very popular uh, Hudson Jenkins integration. Hudson Jenkins is an extremely popular continuous integration server. Um, and we improved several aspects of this plugin to integrate the squish tests into Hudson or Jenkins. Um, and we also support now the slave mechanism of Hudson Jenkins. That concludes the overview of the most important new features of Squish 4.2. And now let's continue with the live demonstration showing you some of the new features in action. For this demonstration, I decided to show you the new feature of inserting verification points for complex data controls. As a demonstration example, I will choose a Java Swing based address book application as my application or test. And in a test scenario, which I want to automate, I will load a set of contacts into this address book and then do a verification on the table, which displays all the contacts. To do that, I will first create a new test suite in the Squish IDE. This brings up this wizard and I will give my new test suite the name address test suite. On the next page, I can now choose which script language I want to use for my testing. Since Ruby is also a new feature of Squish 4.2, let's choose Ruby as my scripting language here. Finally, I need to choose the application I want to automate. So I go to my file system and specify this address book class file, which is the Java Swing based address book application which I want to automate. With that, I can create this new test suite here and create a test case called load contacts. Now I will record my test scenario by clicking the red record button next to the test case. This launches my address book application. And once that finished, Squish will hook into it so we can do a recording on it. That happened now. So now I record opening a file, I will choose my addresses.adr, which is the address book file. And now we see a huge set of contacts um, in my uh, data table. And in addition, I will also add another entry. And insert that. And at this point, I want now to insert a verification point, which shall verify that when we later run this test, that this table displays exactly the data which it is displaying now. So to do that, I go to my control bar and click the button to insert a so-called object property or object verification point. This brings up the test, uh, the squ uh, Squish IDE. And now we see here all the application objects and we can, using the object picker, directly pick the table object which we want to verify. So I pick this object, that's actually a scroll pane which contains the table object. So we drill down and here we are and see the J table object holding all the contacts. So I now want to insert a table verification point for this table. I tick the check mark next to the table. Now Squish retrieves the example data and here it displays now the data which will be later used as the set of expected data which the um, verification point will use when being executed later. So I insert that. And now I will just record exiting the application and not save anything and with that we will get a test script generated. Now we can see here the test script which has been generated. As we can see it's generated in the Ruby language since that is what we have chosen. 
here is the full recording, like we start the application, we open uh, a given file, we we add another entry to it, uh, here are the data entries I recorded, and then finally we have here the verification point, which runs the verification on the uh, table object, and then we um, exit the application. Now we can look here under verification points, we can open this verification point, and here we actually see that's the reference data, which this verification point will compare the data of this J table against when we run the test. So let's now execute the test and see what's happening. Of course, we should expect that everything works fine and nothing uh, uh, has changed in the meantime. So when we run this test, uh, we can expect that the uh, verification will actually pass. So now Squish is driving everything, uh, running the test, including the data entries we did, and doing the verification. And we can see in the test log that the verification passed, table contents appear to be equal. But now to make this whole thing more interesting, let's say we do not want to enter any data. Um, so we just comment out um, this part of my test where we entered a new entry. And let's run the test again. And now, of course, one line should be missing when we do the test, since we are now not adding uh, the new entry to my table. So when the verification is executed, uh, it should give us a failure uh, telling us that one line is missing in there. Let's see if that uh, really happens. So now Squish is running a test again, doing the verification, and as expected, um, we get a failure. And we can see the failure here. It tells us that table contents do not match. Now that gives me already enough information that we know that something went wrong. But now we want to drill down into that and view the differences. And now we can see here in this table differences view that it displays me one line in red. And that means this line has been expected when we uh, do the verification, but it was not present in the actual data which we um, uh, had in the table when running the verification point. So this now tells me, okay, something has been missing here. Line zero uh, was expected to hold the data, but it was not present in a table. Now, um, to make that um, a bit more interesting, let's Let's now um, just change some of the values here. So let's uh, change my last name and my phone number and run the test with those modifications again. So this time the number of rows will be equal and as expected, but the one row which we're adding on the top will contain different data than we expect. So let's see how Squish behaves in this, this scenario. Again, we see in the test results that we had a failure. That's what we expect. And now let's view the differences this time. And here we see it displays us in green the um, the uh, the line which uh, was present in the actual data of the table which we compared, and in red the data which was present in line zero in the um, uh, expected uh, uh, value. So we see that column one and column three were equal, but column two and column four of row zero contained different data. So with this, um, we have a nice visual way to inspect the differences of complex data controls. So um, it is now much easier to execute such verifications and especially in cases such verifications fail to find out where is the actual difference. Um, and uh, uh, based on that, we can then hopefully find out how to fix that problem. Of course, as I already mentioned initially, there are many, many more features of um, of Squish uh, uh, for the two, which are worth to look at, but um, I cannot show you everything in such a short video. So I would like to thank you for your attention.